hello hi guys welcome back to the channel i hope you are all doing great i am also doing good so in this video we're going to discuss about some of the spark tricky interview question which was asked in various companies and it is ranging from 20 lpa to 35 lpa so without further delay let's get into the questions and if you can answer this you can grab a 35 lpa right so we can see the first question suppose you cache the data frame and scaling happens in the spark cluster due to dynamic memory allocation and how newly added nodes get this cache data right the second one how spark behaves when cache the data in node and dynamic memory allocation is true due to that spark try to remove the node how does it gets the cache data once you remove the node we lost the node and data everything right so how can we get the cache data so i can answer these two questions and end of the video first we can try to see the remaining question if you cache a data frame and then perform an action and after that update the underlying source what will be the next action to reflect the cached or updated data right so once you cache the data there is no way that what are the updates that you will receive for the input or the your source do not get reflected in the cached data okay so to do this one first you need to uncache the data unpassed and you have to recache the data this is only way you will get the updated data from the source otherwise it do not get updated second you can see can two spark actions on the same data frame execute in parallel no no two actions execute in the spark on parallel unless until you define it in different threads right so each action will be executed one by one suppose df show and df dot take first it will execute the show next it will execute the take if you use the dot repartition one on a data frame and then apply a filter will the spark read all the data so most of the people can think that since we have a filter it will first filter out the data then it will apply the repartition but no first it will go for the repartition it will shuffle out the data so it reads all data reads all data and it will go for the repartition then it will apply the filter suppose if the filter applies a predicate push downs or something if your source support the predicate push down something like a database or something so in that case sometimes it can also push down this filter to the database and will get only the filter data right so this depends on the source this logic will work what is the difference between the colels one and repartition one both are same it can also give you one partition this can also give you one partition but the way that will execute is a matter so colels will actually combine the two to three partitions into one and it will give you the final partition but repartition it will actually do a shuffling process through the shuffling it will achieve the repartition ones so repartition is shuffling and it go for the full shuffling colors will go for less shuffle okay that's why colors is much faster than repartition what will happen if you perform a group by key on a very large data set and try to collect it so mostly you'll get a chances to get out of memory error so to avoid this one we can use the reduce by key or aggregated by key reduce by key or aggregated by key okay so why count sometimes much slower than take one even though both triggers the same tag count underline triggers the take action only so count will count all the records and can give you the data but take one can take any of the random record and can print the record to you so that's why it's much faster now we'll back to the original questions suppose you cache the data frame and scaling happens in between the cluster how newly added node gets this cached data right so once you cache the data with the newly added nodes there is no way that it can get the cached data if at all if the dax scheduler has assigned one particular task to execute a newly added node then it will go for the source and reread the data 
it into the data. It do not go to the cached node and it cannot copy it because the cached data cannot have the capability to replicate or redistribute. Cannot replicate or cannot redistribute. Right? So if at all it gets a task to uh, work on the cached data, it will go to its stores due to the lineage and it will reread the data. And then it how it performs. Okay. Next you see how Spark visualizes when caching the data in a node and DMA is enabled to true due to that node got removed. How does it get the cached data? So in the executor, if any node or any executor has the cached data, Spark won't remove that particular node because it has some data. So it do not, since it has some cached data, it do not consider this particular executor as ideal. So only when the executor is idle means it it does nothing and it wait for some time by default is sec 10 seconds. So if any node idle time is more than 10 seconds, then only spark initiate to remove this particular node. Since the node has the cache data, it cannot remove. Okay, I hope you got the answers. I got I hope you got some really interesting questions now. So if you like the content or learn at least one new point, please give a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any doubts or anything, please add it into the comment section and let me know the different answers that you have anything. Okay, thank you.